<laughs> okay, that's me done. I hope everybody's awake. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm going to stop talking because I'm not going to be talking for a couple of minutes. <laughs> um, but uh, I will stop talking for a sec and take some water. Excellent. Well, how about that for a kickoff? Thank you, Sinead, for the music choice today. I am Mark Daniels. I'm part of the people team at Guidewire Software, and we are thrilled to welcome everyone with us today, the community from Girls in Tech, Guidewire, and more. Guidewire Software is a company that serves the, makes software for the property casualty insurance markets. And we are especially excited to be partnering with Girls in Tech today to host this master class. And I would be pleased to introduce to you our speaker today, who's Sinead Condon. So Guidewire as a company, as a community impact program that we branded, Guidewire Gives Back. So together with our diversity, equity, and inclusion program at Guidewire, we have partnered with key charitable partners like Girls in Tech to support a future world where all are equally represented in our tech workforce. And that's why we're so excited to be connecting with all of you and having this opportunity to do this masterclass here today. I also wanted to add that again, part of our Guidewire Gives Back program is that we have a special partnership also with the American Indian College Fund. And I believe we have some of our first Guidewire scholarship recipients from the American Indian College Fund with us here today. So a special call out and welcome. We get, look forward to getting to know you too. So for today, it is my honor and privilege to introduce our Chief People Officer, Sinead Condon from Guidewire Software. You can probably read in the introduction that she's curated an impressive career path through the tech and software industry, but I am most excited to have her here today to speak with you because she has an abundance of knowledge, insight, humor, great taste in music, and just making the music happen. So when I connect with her, I always come away a little smarter, a little more confident, and a lot more inspired. Please join me in our best Zoom virtual welcome for Sinead today. Over to you, Sinead. Thank you, Mark. My goodness. That, that's, uh, thank you so much. That was very gracious of you. I appreciate it. Um, it is so exciting to be here with all of you. Um, before we get started, uh, I was just, just before you all came on this morning, or whatever time zone you're in, uh, Mark and I were having a lovely conversation with Victoria, who is, is helping us to host this event today. For those of you that don't know Victoria, you can see her there um, in the panel. Victoria leads um, the Miami chapter of Girls in Tech um, and is part of, of the Girls in Tech community there. And so we were having the conversation about uh, fake it till you make it. And Victoria said, she stopped very intentionally. She paused very intentionally and she said, you know, really don't like the fake it till you make it um, language. And I said, oh, okay, let's talk about that. And she said, well, I have something else. And so we very emergently put it in to the slide deck. And here's what she says. And I and Mark loved it. Endure it till you become it. So Victoria, this is in honor of you and uh, you giving us that little gift this morning that we decided to put it into the slide. So thank you very much for that. All right, so here's what I would like you to do. Um, I want you to just settle in for the next 35 minutes of however long I'm gonna be talking. Hopefully we'll get some Q and A in. And as I kind of navigate through some of my insights and my experiences, um, just suspend your disbelief a little bit, just kind of open yourself up to what's going on in this space. Um, and if, as I'm going through, and I don't want this to be content heavy, although I'm using slides to kind of keep me structured as well, but just let the content wash over you. Um, I certainly encourage you as you're, you know, you're, you're in the, the Zoom, even if you can, I don't know if you can see uh, the other participants, but maybe reach out to somebody afterwards and say, hey, I saw you were on the Zoom. What do you think of what Sinead was talking about? How would you apply it? So let's kind of create some opportunity, whether it's with people you know, whether it's people you don't, we've got lots of people on this call, um, just reach out and talk to them and, and uh, get to know, the, get to kind of get a sense of what perspectives are surfacing for you as you hear me talk about things. Um, so always lots of opportunity in front of us. We just got to take it. 
So part of that, of course, is, is to create some time to process. Um, you may not do that today because we're going to be covering some stuff. Um, but give yourself some time, maybe afterwards, jot stuff down. Like I said, talk to some folks that will help land some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about. If it doesn't land, don't worry about it. It's perfectly fine. Just let it wash over you. Um, and as I'm going through it, the most important thing that we can do in this is you are saying to yourself, how does it apply to me? Where can I get the application of this? So Sinead's telling me this stuff. Where's the opportunity for me? How does this work in my world? And if you're not getting that sense, feel free to put it into the chat. Uh, Mark's going to hold, hold space for me. So he's going to help me make sure that we're kind of keeping time. And, and if you've got questions that you can certainly ask me. But this is about you. I am completely in service to you in this. Um, and we want it to be valuable for you. And we can pivot at any time. Um, and certainly as we get into questions. So let's just create some safety um, and fun for you. And hopefully along the way, you'll learn and put something in your back pocket. Okay, sound good? All right, let's move. Okay, so as I was preparing for this, there's a lot of things that we could talk about, for sure. Um, you look, my career spanned 25 years. I've got a lot of stuff that I can talk about. Um, but the first thing that I want to share with you as a tool is we're going to focus, we're going to narrow it down. Of all the things that I could talk about, I'm going to narrow it down to three things. The reason for that is I could talk about a lot of stuff. I could, I could go on all day, but then you would get a lot of stuff into your head. You probably wouldn't process a whole lot. And so the first thing that you're going to learn from me in this moment is, here's a life lesson, less is more. Focus on important stuff for right now. And I want you to put this tool in your toolkit because it's going to apply to you throughout your whole life, regardless of where you're in your career, um, regardless of where you are in your life. We have a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of distraction. There's a lot of need for resiliency. Um, we're always busy. And so what I invite you to do is simply to think about what you're doing um, across your, you know, your, in your career, across your life, and don't get bogged down in the nitty gritty. Lift yourself up from that and think about what is most important to me in this moment and focus on that. So that's the first thing I want to leave you with is think about narrowing down the stuff that's most important to you right now. Now, part of what we're going to navigate today is what is most important. How do I determine what is most important in my life? And, you know, look, we're going to navigate around kind of careers. That's kind of going to be the main theme. But just bear with me as we go on this journey together. Um, but keep that in your back pocket, right? My, my, that's what I had to do this morning as I was, or in the last couple of days, as I was thinking and prepping for this, I can talk about lots of stuff, but we're going to narrow it down to three things. So what are we going to narrow it down to? Here are the three things that I think are most important. Your ability to tell your own story. How in that story, as you become that story and as you think about that story, how do you self-advocate now that you've crafted that story for yourself? As we build and craft that story, as we care and feed that story, because that story will evolve. And if you feel, I don't have a story yet, I'm still kind of starting out, that's okay, but guess what? you actually do have a very compelling story to tell. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that. Because unless we have a story that we can kind of anchor ourselves to, it's very hard to self-advocate because our stories become the foundation of who we are, right? So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. And who do we share that story with? We build relationships so that people can learn about us. We can learn about their stories. So building relationships throughout your career is probably one of the most important things that you can do. And we do that genuinely, we do that authentically, we do that graciously. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. All right, so does that sound like a plan? Mark's my guy, Mark's the one that gives me all the energy the thumbs up because I can't see you guys. So that's, uh, so that's good. So let's start there. All right, 
So let's start on have a story. So this is how we're going to navigate. We're going to talk about stories. We're going to talk about self-advocating. We're talking about building relationships. Now, again, we're talking about your career as well. We're talking about when I'm faced with, you know, going in and I'm looking for a new job or I'm starting off in my first job. What does that look like? And so we're going to kind of apply the applications of that as we go through it. Okay. So here's what I'd like to do right now, because we're talking about the art of telling your story. I'm not going to spend a lot of time because we don't have a lot of time together on here's the 10 things you need to know to know uh, to build the muscle of telling the story. I want you to get curious. I'm telling you, let's learn to build stories together. I'm going to help you navigate that. But I want you to get curious and I want you to go out and learn about that. What does it mean to tell stories? What are you going to find on YouTube around telling stories? The part that I want you to land with right now is telling a story. The ability to tell your narrative is really, really important throughout your whole life. And so that is something that I want to land with you right now. And so what I want to ask you, I'm going to open up the chat for a second. I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to call you out, but in the chat, just for a second, when you hear me talk about the art of telling your story, what comes to mind? Why do you think I'm saying that telling your story is important? Just throw out some words there. Whatever comes to mind, I'll, I'll read them out. Um, but just start kind of uh, putting some stuff in there. Why is storytelling important? Uh, Deirdre says, because I'm one of a kind. Yes, and we're going to talk about that. Humans love stories. We are storytellers. We're natural storytellers. That's exactly right. You look at any ad on TV, what do they do? They bring you on a story. You look at any startup that's pitching their idea. What are they doing? They're bringing you on a story. Products tell store, stories to, to, to uh, sell our products. Um, makes you human. It's not just your voice. Showing your authentic self ignites connection uh, we remember stories, that's true. We gain empathy, says Brittany. Absolutely, from your audience, we gain empathy. So these are the types of things that help us to tell our story. So I want to thank you for, for sharing that and keep putting them in because it's going to help you land as you hear these things. It's going to help them land with you as you write them down. Okay, so that's, yes, that's why stories are important. And so here's what I want to think about for a second. Let's use another analogy. I want you to think of yourself as a painting. In fact, you know, I've never done this. I've never actually taken a paintbrush and a plain canvas and painted what I would envision myself to look like if I was an abstract art. What do you think, Mark? I think I should do that. But I want you to think of yourselves as a piece of beautiful abstract art. Just bear with me for a second. This is the suspend your disbelief part. Because if you think of yourself as a piece of abstract art, what would that look like? All the turns, you know, some of the grayness, some of the light, like we've all had such amazing experiences, regardless of where you are in your life right now. You have grown up, you have had experiences in your life, and all of those help you to craft your worldview. And I'm going to do a little bit of a deep dive on worldview and how it applies to work and career in a second. But I want you to think about what that abstract art is that represents you. What would it look like? Because here's the thing, folks. When people look at that piece of art, they form their own opinions on it. Have you ever been to an art gallery and people are all staring at that piece of art and somebody turns to you and goes, so what is it for you? What do you see in this picture? Right? Because everybody has their own interpretation of it. And in the absence of you providing some story around what the interpretation of your story is, people will form their own opinions. And it might be great, but it may not be. So I invite you to think, and this is the analogy, you have a palette today, it's filled with color. And what I invite you to do is take the opportunity, regardless of where you are in your life, and bearing in mind, even if you had your own story, we've just been through and continue to be through two years of a pandemic that has a profound effect on all of us in some form or fashion. 
And some of the analogy that I've used with people is when we talk about kind of team design, that's a lot of what we're talking about in Guidewire right now is thinking about how our teams want to be together because we've learned in the last two years, we know what we want, but many of us know what we don't want now, right? We don't want the grind of being on a Zoom call for 15 hours a day, right? We want to spend time with our friends and our family. We want to work differently, right? And so we have an opportunity now as we kind of, you know, um, represent, I'm going to do the representation of taking off the mask for a second, right? What's behind that mask now might be very, very different. So here you have the opportunity to craft that story. Because again, if we're not, there's a lot of people out there that are making their own ideas of what I am. And they may not be what I want them to be. There's somebody there saying Sinead's quite harsh, you know, um, they could be saying other things. And so in that, of course, look, there's another way to look at this too, as we craft our story. It's what is our brand, right? You're going to find interviewers will often say to you, if I was to ask somebody who knows you, how they would describe you, what would they say? And if they were to say to you, the recruiter said to you, or a manager said to you, how do you describe yourself? Whatever way you want yourself described, right? When Sinead walks into a room, here's the sense I get. There's, there's an authenticity there. There's a curiosity there because she leans in when she's talking to me. Um, she, um, she sees me as an important part of the work that she does and she makes me feel that way. Like whatever you want people to feel when you walk into that room, that is your brand. You wanna cultivate that brand very authentically. But you also wanna share that with people. Right? Because in the absence of that, people will come up with their own. And the only way to do that is for people to get to know you. So that's what I want you to be thinking about as we're crafting that story. And we're going to break that story down a little bit. Sound good? Make sense, that analogy? Okay. All right. So look, we all know we all have our own identity, right? And so you pick out that backpack, with whatever that is for you, but we're all very, very unique. And as we get to know people, whether we're starting off in our career, whether we're transitioning in our career, whether we're, you know, we're working on a team, there are new members of that team coming in, maybe you have a new manager, whatever that is for you, you are just a backpack. You're just a backpack, right? You part of your job, and we're going to talk about this in self-advocacy, part of your job is to, to really show the color of what that looks like for people. What's inside the backpack? right? Um, and, and getting people to know you and what you bring to the table and, and how you show up is really, really important. And, and I really want to kind of bring that home. Hey, if you learn nothing else from our time together, just remember that. What is that for you? Because this is going to stand with you for the rest of your life. Okay, so we're talking about crafting your story. And you know, we, we have, uh, you know, as we talk about in Guidewire and as a chief people officer, one of the things that's really important for me is that people, when people see me, when people get to know me, they know who I am, they know what I stand for, they know what's important to me. And then collectively as a community, we're able to stand in together to that because although we're all different, we're not looking to be the same, but I can bring what I bring to the table and I can invite others and encourage others to bring what they bring to the table. And collectively, we form a community around that because we can draw parallels from each other. We can align on certain values together. But often what you will notice when teams and look, I do a lot of advisory work with startups as well. And one of the things, one of the main things that drags people down is really team dynamics. It's putting a bunch of humans in a room that don't understand each other or worse again, make assumptions about each other, right? So we don't wanna live in a world where we're just making assumptions about each other, right? And who are the people that are gonna to wanna to know what your story is? Recruiters are going to want to know their, your story. If you're 30 minutes talking to a recruiter, what are they trying to get to? They're trying to get to who is this person? What makes this person different, right? And so sitting into that and having a sense of what that is for you is going to be really, really important. Your hiring manager is gonna to want to know what that looks like. Um, 
your colleagues, right? So everybody wants to know what that story looks like. And I'm gonna to say to you, you know, as we go through this, this is not just about you, but it's also about your curiosity to lean into other stories as well. Okay, that's a lot. How's the pace? Is it good? Okay, I'm gonna stop for a moment and I'm gonna get some energy from the chat. And so if my pace is going okay, pace is perfect, Anna-Marie, thank you so much for that. I'm loving this. Kate, thank you so much. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's keep going on that. Now, this brings me to how can I establish my brand? How can I get people to really understand what that means? Now, I'm going to tell you, if we were all in a room together, and hopefully sometime we will get into a room together, because um, physical um, connection is really, really important. But if I was in a room with you, I want you to picture yourself in, we're in a circle, and we're all standing or sitting, it doesn't matter. But in this moment, I would say to you, I want you to put your hand up. And I would say to you that that hand is your imprint of who you are and your value system. It is your worldview. And I would say to you, point to each, each digit and give it a, a, a letter, J-O-B-B-V. Your judgments, your opinions, your biases, your beliefs, and your values. Okay, so just let that land for a second. This is your imprint. This is who you are. Regardless of where you are in your life, that is who you are right now. Here's what happens, though, with our judgments, opinions, biases, beliefs, and values. I'm going to turn that around, and I'm going to put it close to my chest. What I'm representing there is, unless you tell people, no one knows what that imprint is. No one knows what your judgments are. No one knows what your opinions are unless you are transparent with what that looks like, right? You don't have to be transparent about everything. We're not talking about opening up Pandora's box to everything. But for people to work together, part of that misalignment and dysfunction that comes with cultivating relationships or being a high-performing team is that we hold this so close to our chest that it's really hard for us to get to know each other as people. So I want to kind of break down for you what I mean by judgments, opinions, biases, beliefs, and values. And to help me do that, I wrote this down last night. And I'm going to read it out to you because I want to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm saying it in a way that hopefully will land. So here's the example. You see, see, what, you see someone not speaking up in a meeting. Your opinion is that for the meeting to work, everyone needs to contribute. Your judgment is that people who don't speak up in a meeting shouldn't bother being there. Your biases is that the next time you are in control of a meeting agenda, you're only going to invite the loudest voices. Your belief is that only extroverts should be invited to meetings. So where does the line of thinking come from? Well, it's your value system. Because the experiences that we have to this point make us who we are. The challenge here is that we make assumptions all the time that um, we know, we believe these judgments, opinions, biases, beliefs, and values to be true, right? And so, where I want you, what I invite you to do is I want you to think about what your judgments, opinions, biases, beliefs, and values are. That is your worldview. And here's what I want you to do with them. I don't want you to put them to the side. You can't because they're already there. And for the most part, they may be subconscious to you. You may not even know they exist. But what I'd like you to do that for every opportunity moving forward, whether you're going into an interview, you're meeting with a recruiter, whether you're going to meet your manager for the first time, Whatever that is for you, I want you to think about as you're kind of crafting your story for yourself, what are those judgments, opinions, biases, beliefs, and values? And are there healthy manifestations of that? And are there unhealthy manifestations? To say, to have a belief that I, you know, I only think that extroverts should be in the room because they're the only people with a voice, and if they're the only people with a voice, they're the only ones that should be contributing. Not very healthy, right? 
it might be something that we kind of keep to ourselves and that's okay, but I want you to kind of work through what that means for you, what that means for you. I will tell you, I was in, in, a, in a previous life, I was coaching an executive and they were getting ready to go into a customer meeting. And in that customer meeting, it was, uh, there was a SEV one and a bunch of people were invited to the meeting. And so they all get to the meeting and the person, the executive was telling me this story uh, because I had coached them on worldviews before. And what she said to me was, hey, Sinead, I want to tell you about this customer SEV one meeting. I wound up not going. And I said, oh, how come? And she said, because I remembered what you said about worldview. And what I realized before I went into the meeting is that I didn't actually like the customer. And I knew that when I showed up at that customer meeting, that how my behavior manifested was probably not in service to trying to solve the problem. So I bowed out of the meeting and I had somebody go who was much more objective than I was. Now, that might be an extreme case, but what I mean for that is um, knowing what they are, exploring that for yourself will help you learn to know yourself better, know how you show up and how you might need to adapt how you are showing up, knowing, that, and I'm not saying be disingenuous, but knowing what that impact might be beforehand. Make sense? Okay. All right. So let's talk about self-advocacy in that. Um, how am I doing on time, uh, Mark? We doing okay? Yep, right at half hour. Yep. So, so let's let's so be, before I go any any further, does anybody have any kind of questions on what that what that means? Um, any questions at all? Let me just pause for a second. I'm going to take some water. Okay, no questions so far. All right, so let's talk a little bit about self advocacy. You know. I hear about self-advocacy all the time, and I do find it very pressurizing for people. I, I think it can, it can put pressure on folks when, if as an example, you are, you're not quite there yet in, in your confidence. Um, you may still be trying to figure out what your own story is. Maybe you've been burned in the past. And so when people are constantly saying to you, you need to self-advocate, you need to have a voice, you need to be the loudest voice in the room, you need to be able to fight for what you want. That's great, but not everybody can do that. And so I want you to know that that is okay. You will learn to do that over time and you will learn to do it when you sit with who you are right now uh, forget about who you might want to be. That's great. But sit with who you are because who you are is amazing. Who you are is amazing. Wherever you are in your life, you've gotten to this point because of who you are. And so learn, first of all, to self-advocate for who you are in this moment. Remember we talked about at the beginning, I could talk about 10 things, but I'm only going to talk about these three things. Think about that, about your self-advocacy. What's most important to you right now? As you think about your belief system, maybe, you know, part of your belief system, and it's certainly for me, I want to surround myself with authentic people. I'm, look, I've been doing this a long time. I don't want to play games. I just want to be with people who are in service to creating great things and creating environments that can thrive. And we can all do that together. That is part of my belief system. It's why I'm in Guidewire, right? Because I believe the environment that I'm in is conducive to that. I need to contribute to that, of course, right? But the self-advocacy part is I will always tell people I want to be in an authentic environment where I am free to be myself. I'm not sure I was as confident to say that maybe 10 years ago, honestly. Um, you know, I might be, I, I, I know 10 years ago, I probably would have been afraid if I didn't understand something to kind of put my hand up and say, I'm not sure I understand that. Can you help me understand it? Um, but I've kind of grown to have that confidence. Uh, but. I, you know, when I was 18 years old, I started my first company and I thought I could accomplish everything. 
right? I thought I could just do, I could, I could go to the moon and back. Um, and so I've had to learn. I wish somebody would have told me when I was 18 years old, even that it's okay to be yourself, that it's okay to sit into who you are right now, because who you are is amazing. My 18 year old Evan has started his own company and he is, you know, struggling with how to form his identity and to tell his own story. But he is, you know, we've had the conversation about value systems and his judgments and he's got judgments and opinions, opinions, biases, beliefs and values right now. The, the, the invitation to him is to write that down to really explore it for himself and what it means to him. So I encourage you to do the same. So on the self advocacy side, why is self advocacy important, like even from where we are right now, why should we self advocate. And what does it even mean to self-advocate? So here's one of the things that I want you to do right now. Um, I'm going to tell you that every word you ever learn, any word that's ever used, authenticity, transformation, um, prioritization, transparency, whatever those words are, they're all suitcase words. What do I mean by that? Self-advocacy self might be a suitcase word too. It means that everybody has their own idea of what these words are. And so what I have a tendency to do all the time is even though, yes, I know the word, but it's important sometimes to just Google it and, and see what the definition is to kind of re-anchor you to, to the true essence of what the word is. So here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. You're on your computer right now because you're on Zoom. Go to Google real quick. And I want you to type in self-advocacy meaning. And I want you to write it into the chat right now. See who gets there first. I should put on some uh, Bruno Mars. That's what I want you to do. I want you to go to that. And I want you to remember, here's, the, here's one of the moments as you're doing that, is don't assume everybody knows what it means when you use words. You can even in the moment, even in a meeting or when you're talking to somebody, just Google it and say, here's the definition. I just want to make sure that we both believe that's the definition of it. Yes, it means the actions of representing oneself or one's views or interests. The action of representing oneself or one's, yes, take care to live up to the brand statement, right? Now, you'll notice if you haven't Googled it, you may be interpreting what it is and everybody has their own idea of it, right? And so it's really important that we all understand what it means. So I put it in there. I Googled it. I Googled it last night. Here's what it says. The action of representing oneself or one's views or interests. Now, this is interesting, right? Because when people say, you got to self-advocate, you got to self-advocate. What are you self-advocating for? If you're self-advocating for one's views and one's interests, do you have one's views? This goes back to our worldview. You can't self-advocate if you don't know what you're standing up for, right? So anchor yourself to that for yourself right now. Now, I'm going to tell you something. What you self-advocate for today may not be what you self-advocate for a year from now, may not be what you self-advocate for for five years from now, because you are ever, ever evolving, ever growing. You are becoming you. So we celebrate who you are right now and what you want to self-advocate for this in this moment. And we will celebrate who you are in five years and what you are at that time and what you want to self-advocate for. But if you are, as an example, talking to a recruiter, right, or a manager, and they say to you, what do you believe in, right? What is most important to you? This is the moment of self-advocacy, right? It can be as much as saying, hey, I'd love to get an experience to do this particular thing. This is really, really cool. But what I invite you to do is when you say that, know why you're saying it. Why is it that this is cool to you? Why is it important for you right now to have this experience? I want you to finish the story, pull the thread, be intentional about it. Don't just say, yeah, it'd be really cool to work on this stuff. Um, yeah, I, you know, I want to get experience as a full stack developer. That'd be really, really cool. I want to work on blockchain. That's super cool to me. That's awesome. It doesn't really say much, right? Pull the thread. Make sense? Okay. So Sinead, we have a question. 
How do you manage how do you manage the line between self-advocacy and coming off as overconfident and arrogant from Samantha? Yes, I love that. Um, I believe in full transparency. Here's what I would say to that. Um, I want to self-advocate right now, but I don't want it to come off as being overly confident because that is not my intent. So I want to I want to say it, um, but just know that it comes from a good place. Um, and so I'm still trying to navigate my tone and how I say this because I'm still practicing how to self-advocate for myself. I believe in vulnerability. I believe in saying it because if you were to put, if you framed it that way, um, and then it comes off as cocky and overconfident, then you've already put your disclaimer in there, quite honestly. I mean, that's how vulnerable that can be, right? Um, because people don't know us. And, and that kind of goes back to, I don't want people assuming that I'm cocky and overconfident or God forbid I have an ego, right? Um, and so I, I do believe in kind of throwing that out into the space. Now, look, I don't want you to diminish your confidence. That's not what we're, we're saying. And so there is a way to navigate that. But I promise you, if you can be in the space, regardless of who you're talking to and lean into, look, I want to come off this way. It's really important to me that I show up this way. Um, and I am confident and I want to be able to say with full transparency, but know where this is coming from. Know what my intent is in saying this to you. That really helps to not only solidify and align, but really gives people a sense of who you are. Yeah? Okay. How are we doing on time? We are like 15 minutes left. 15? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 15 minutes, including Q&A or 15 minutes with? In total, yeah. In total. Yeah. Um, all right. So I'm going to go to building relationships because that's the third thing I want to talk to you about. When my children were little, they're now 15 and 18, I used to give them cue cards when we would have people over for dinner because here's what my kids used to do. They used to say, and I think I, I was guilty of this too. We can all be guilty of it. You go and you talk to somebody and you create space where you only talk about yourself. All about me. Guess what? You don't build relationships that way. It's a two way street. And the reason I would give them cue cards is because my children would go over and they would say, so let me tell you all the things I'm working on. Now people would ask them, right? Oh, hey, Evan, what are you working on? You're working on your startup. Tell me all about that. And then Evan would suck up the space on what that looks like. He was very good about it. He didn't, but he could. And so what I wanted them to learn was, so that's about me. What about you? If you want to build relationships, you have to be naturally curious. And that means even if you're in an interview, tell me more about you. Even if you were to say to a recruiter, how did you get to be a recruiter for this? You're building a relationship. Why have you as a recruiter decided to recruit in this space? Right? Get the foundation of relationships. It's a two-way street. It's about naturally natural curiosity on both sides, but you can cultivate that right now. Right. Don't be thinking about, you know, oh, my gosh, what am I going to say to this person? I promise you, if you're naturally curious, you will be a good listener. You will ask the right questions and you will you will cultivate really strong relationships. Be intentional about getting to know people. Regardless of where you are in your life, get to know people, get them to know you for who you are and really remember we talked about the hand right remember everybody is like this right you have to have the natural curiosity to say what do you believe in be curious about other worldviews it will stop i promise you if you if you get to know what your story is and can craft it if you can self-advocate based on the foundation of that worldview, and you share those worldviews um, with folks as you use that to get to know each other, then I promise you, you will do very, very well in whatever you decide to do. 
Okay, so let's talk just a little bit before I, I, I stop. Getting prepared, uh, let me see, I gotta move this out of the way because it's very annoying right now. Being prepared. This is the one thing I do say to people. Um, I don't see enough of that actually in, in all kind of the advisory and coach work that I do. Um, people are not very prepared but there's a lot of kind of wing it out there and even it's about you know building relationships like who if you're going into a meeting here's an application of it if you're going into a meeting who are the players who are they go on their linkedin profile see you know what clubs are they in you know do they have a picture of their dog like it's it's not just about the job it's not just about getting to know someone's role it's also about getting to know that person really truly for who they are making people feel safe right? That is one, that is a great gift that you can give to somebody. And part of that safety and trust is you being intentional to create space for that by being curious, by leaning in, by being a good listener, by sharing your worldviews in a way that is intentional with others, helping people to understand what's important to you, but also leaning in and saying, what is important to you? Here's what's important to me. What's important to you? but being authentic and being yourself. All right, so um, I'm going to say one last thing and that's a time boxing skill. Um, when you are having any conversations, I want you to realize that there is an arc to every conversation, whether you're in a 30 minute check-in, whether you're in an hour meeting, whether you're talking to a recruiter for 20 minutes, uh, it doesn't matter what it is, who it is. Every conversation has an arc. There is a start and a finish. And as you think about your worldview, as you think about self-advocating, I want you to think of the natural arc of a conversation, knowing that when you go into a conversation, there is a natural order of things. And the most important thing is that you don't come out of a meeting going, what just happened? Where do we go from here? What do we need to do? But think about what, the intentionality, the intent of the conversation is, and that you are thinking about not just what the other person is getting out of it, but what you need to get out of it as well. And bearing in mind at the end of conversa the conversation, you always want a little mic drop moment. What do you want to leave people with when you leave the conversation? Think about that. That's a self-advocacy tip. Okay, I'm gonna stop and see what questions we have. Um, why don't I stop share? I'm going to stop sharing. And Victoria, can we share the tiles so people, if they want to come off and ask their question, we could do that. Sure. Or if that's if that's complicated, we can also take questions no, in the chat or Q and A. Yeah, they can raise their hand and ask questions if they want. And I mean, the other thing, you know, if if you don't have a question right now. What, here's one of the things, I always do this when we do our all hands every, every month. Um, why don't you write down in the chat one thing that landed with you most specifically, like of all the things that I talked about, the three things that I talked about, telling the story, self-advocacy, building relationships. What landed with you most in that? Just write it down in your chat because we'll probably see that different things landed differently for, for folks. Being vulnerable enough to tell your story. Thank you for saying that, Sam Jones. Um, there is, yeah, and vulnerability needs need, need safety. That's why if you want somebody to be vulnerable with you, you have to create the space of safety for, to allow for that. Sometimes that means being vulnerable yourself, right? Being prepared, yeah. You know, wing it is great sometimes, but you really need to be good at winging it. Being prepared is also a respect thing, right? Coming into a meeting, going into an interview. Pulling the thread through, that's exactly right. Connecting the dots of your story and finishing through on why things are important. Job V, the worldview, judgments, opinions, biases, beliefs, and values. It's really what makes us tick, folks. Like, think of all those backpacks, right? You're all walking into a room, you all have your backpack. That backpack's filled with your worldview, right? 
That's what we spend our whole life navigating. It's what's inside the backpack. Look at that. that, Victoria. Deirdre said, what landed, endure it till you make it. <laughs> Go, wow. Victoria. Okay, that's great. <laughs> I'm glad it worked out. Um, you do have a question from Carla. Um, she said, how to overcome technical language in a non-tech environment? How do you overcome technical language? So she's the one with the technical language and she's going into a space where they're non-technical. Is that, is that that's what how I, that's how I read it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. She yes. Said so. Okay. Carla saying yes. So one of the things that, you know, this actually comes back to safety because oftentimes what happens is in, in an environment where um, but if you're in a tech environment, those that are non-technical can get very intimidated, right? And so you don't want people feeling intimidated. And so when we go into a meeting and we're talking about technical terms, and technical terms don't have to be like tech tech, they can be acronyms, they can be like, it doesn't matter what it is, the technicality of whatever that function is, um, because you may not necessarily be a coder or, or, or something like that. But to be able to say, and this is what I would call facilitative leadership as a skill, is if, if, if you, some of you may not know what to facilitate actually means, it comes from the Latin word to make easy. And it's really important that if you are a technical person coming in to talk in a technical way to non-technical people, that your job is to make it easy, right? Now, it's one thing to say, okay, do I have to do a deep dive to make sure that they understand it? But the intent can be to say, I'm gonna use some technical terms here. I will try to make it as easy as possible. Um, if you don't understand, please let me know. Um, but, and, and don't worry if it doesn't land with you, that's fine. I'm happy to take it offline, right? But you don't want people feeling intimidated um, or, you know, look, I, you know, I'm being thick, I don't understand, but I'm not going to say anything. You want people to feel in the space that they have safety to say, I don't get it. I don't get it. And that's your job to do that is to facilitate that process for people, right? And not make assumptions that everybody understands it because you have to kind of go with the lowest denominator and even say, like, I hear from people all the time. Um, okay, so I'm going to explain something that's technical. I assume all of you understand. And then you go on to the next thing. So take the time, say, look, here's what I mean by that. Happy to do a deeper dive. If you don't understand it, that's fine. We'll take it offline. Someone wants to ask you a question live. So I'll unmute Sharon so that she can ask her question if that's okay. Yeah, great. Wonderful. Hey, Sharon. Hey, can you hear me? I can, and thank you for uh, thank you for being live on TV. <laughs> no worries. I wanted to do this because, um, well, I'm new at Guidewire, and I'm hearing you speak for the first time. It's really great. You're, you've had a really great workshop today. Thanks for that. And uh, so my question was that with my current work from home setup, I'm finding it difficult to hold that conversation. You just spoke about arc of conversation, right? They, uh, I often find myself halt, haunting, uh, sorry, stopping at one point and wondering what can I speak further so would you recommend any books or how can I practice on you know acing this you know it's a great question and first of all I would say um I don't have a book that I would recommend I would say practice 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 even practice with friends um look if there's one thing that remote work has done and even with the pandemic it's forced all of us because we've all been remote to really build some tools into our back pocket and that means like look if your manager comes on and he wants to know he or she wants to know what you're doing that you have the ability to articulate that in a way that's clear and that kind of expresses the priorities and what's important to you right um but i would say find somebody to practice with find, and reach out to me, I'll practice with you, right? Um, and that arc of the conversation is really, really interesting. There is, in fact, the arc of the conversation does just as a tool, it comes from coaching. In fact, I think it is, if I'm not mistaken, it's the coactive coaching model that uses it. But if you look at arc of the coaching conversation, you will see lots of things on Google about it, right? And, and that's kind of basically it. And so I would even say like, when you go into a conversation, 
Um, and people don't do this well, it's here's what I'd like to get from the conversation. I know we have only 20 minutes together. Um, and so the outcome that I'm hoping for is that we could do these two things. Remember, most important in the moment, right? And so yes. frame it that way and then kind of use the arc and time box that are you getting to those two things that you wanna close out? And you can say, this is where time boxing comes in. Hey, we've only got 10 or 15 minutes left. Um, I want to make sure that we get to that. Now, it's two-way street, right? This is what I want to get out of the meeting. What do you want to get out of the meeting, right? A little bit different when you're one-on-one -on -one versus in a group, but you can practice both. I'm happy to do that with you. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Sinead, we have a question from Eileen. Yeah. Any, any ideas on how we can get to know people out of their job roles? I feel like conversations are usually quite professional in nature, and it can feel like an interview. Yeah, I think, look, you know, if you're remote, it's a, a kind of virtual cup of coffee, obviously, if, look, if you're, if you're, let's talk about the remote thing first. Um, I think if there's intent to say, I just want to get to know you, then say, I just want to get to know you. I'd love to get to know you, right? And not have a, a, an agenda, just, just, but be prepared to go in and say, um, here's who I am, here's how I like to work, I'd love to work with you more, or I haven't had the chance to work with you, uh, but I'd like to get to know you as, as a person, here's what's important to me. This goes back to the worldview thing. Here's what's important to me, here's my belief system. Um, hey, how long have you worked here, but what's important to you in, in just in terms of your personality? I think that's, that's, being proactive about it is really the key here, right? Is being proactive and being authentic and telling people, I just wanna get to know you. There's nothing wrong with that. I think we overcomplicate things a lot. Keep it simple, <laughs> people. Keep it simple. And there could be opportunities like a guideware where we have different types of organizations to join, our diversity program, our Toastmasters, like different things that take you out of your work team and give you other ways to That's right. Yeah, practice. And, can... and I can imagine other companies that you might work for would have similar how can I, you know, be part of a different group that's not just my work team? That's that's exactly right. And in Guidewire, we have lots of ERGs now, right? And and those are are great ways to to build community and get to know community, for sure. I think um, I'm not sure if I missed anyone's question here. I do want to say for those of you that are on on the call. Um, Anytime anybody wants to reach out to me directly, um, whether you get me on LinkedIn, um, regardless of what that is, I'm actually going to put in, look, I'm going to do this live, folks. <laughs> I'm giving you my phone number. This is what I meant in my introduction. She means it. She'll be there to um, help you. Yeah. Text me, reach out to me. I'm happy to chat with you. Um, there's not a, you know, this is a kind of very high level conversation. We could deep dive on anything. Um, but um, I'm happy to I'm happy to do that. We are coming up to the end of the hour, but this has been an amazing conversation, Sinead. Thank you. I think I can speak right. on behalf of all of our participants here that, um, that we've taken away a lot of the energy and magic that I talked about. So thank you for that. Well, insight. I I appreciate uh, appreciate you um, for for coming on and holding space for me, Victoria. Um, thank you so much for your graciousness to all of you who've taken the time out of your day to spend a little bit of time with us. Um, I am so appreciative. I learn every day. I may be in this for a while, but I have a lot to learn and I'm learning from folks like you every day. Remember, I want you to think back of that abstract painting. You are already amazing. Um, share it with the world and let people know who you are. All right. Thank you so much, folks. Thanks, everybody. Take Appreciate care. It. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you all. Girls in Tech.